There are many articles and YouTube videos comparing D&D 5th edition starter kit and accession kit as to which one makes the best starting adventure for new players. I have started with starter kit myself and now playing essential kit. I have played about 80% of both adventures. The difference here on my review from others are mine is from solo beginner D&D player perspective, who is playing these as an alternative to adventure board games. Let's get started. I will not go into a detail of every single difference between the two kits as there are many great reviews talking about them already. First point I'd like to emphasize is when looking at a comparison table, you may initially identify Essential Kit has so many more extra contents than the Starter Kit for only $5 extra. The Essential Kit value is unbeatable but many of the extra items are optional and different cards are made of cardboards and just plain text except sidekick cards. So they are not high quality. Basically, I do not believe they add any real value. However, there are other parts that Essential Kit has better value than Starter Kit, which I will come back later. As far as rulebook goes, Essential Kit has twice as many pages. In most situations, more pages equals more contents and therefore better value. However, when it comes to D&D rulebook, the official basic rulebook is available for free to download and it's 180 pages long. So the here, as a starter, shorter, simpler version could be strength. If you already know or intend to dive deep into the full rule, neither may matter as you might as well just use basic rulebook or even consider purchasing a full rulebook, player's handbag. When D&D 5th edition is played in solo, there are three critical factors. Player character factor, adventure factor, monster non-player character factor. The third point, monster NPC factor refers to monster AI. Since none of D&D 5th edition adventure is made to be played without dungeon master, neither covers this. This is something you need to make your own. If you don't know where to start, I have been developing a monster AI making system for 5e on my own, and you can check it out on my website. So the primary comparison points are the first two. Unlike the adventure board games, a player character in D&D 5th edition has many options of what it can do during its turn and various customizations. These details comes in with side effects for solo players, especially as a beginner. First. The making of player character has very detailed rule of its own. Essential Kid assumed the entire first session to be spent making characters. For many players, this may be a fun part of the D&D. However, if you want to play this like an adventure board game and dive right into the game as soon as possible, this step will feel a hindrance. The starter kit adventure, Lost Mine on Fandelver, comes with 5 level 1 pre-generated characters. So you can forget about making own character and just dive right into the game. On the contrary, Essential Kit guides and asks you to create own character before starting the adventure. It does not come with any pre-generated player character. Therefore, as written, the Lost Mine of Fandelver appears to be more beginner friendly from the making of character standpoint of view. However, it turns out that all pre-generated characters on the starter kit and more characters, including higher level versions, are available for free download on the Wizard of the Coast official website. So if you know where to look, this is not a real advantage for a starter kit. Controlling multiple player characters by yourself is far more involved than any other adventure board game in 5e. However, D&D adventures are written to be played by several player characters forming a party, usually four. So as a sole player, this could be one major hindrance. The Lost Mine of Fandelver adventure in Starter Kit is built for, indeed, four to six players. One player plays a dungeon master role. So this is built for three to five players. On the contrary, 
Dragon Ball Ice Pirate Peak Adventure in Essential Kit is built for even support, one-on-one -on -one play. This means the adventure is officially balanced even for a single player character. This is possible because of newly introduced system called Sidekicks. On one-on-one -on -one play, the adventure recommends the player to use one player character and have one sidekick character to form two character party. Sidekicks are highly simplified version of player character that uses only monster stat block equivalent of details. Sidekick system makes controlling multiple characters manageable even as a beginner. They are simple but well balanced. Some even suggest a beginner should perhaps start an adventure with sidekick version of a character. Once the player familiarizes enough with the rule and knows which type of a character he or she wants to use, then step up to the full player character. Essential Kick contains 9 sidekick characters, 3 for each sidekick role types. This rule is the major advantage of Essential Kit over the starter kit as a solo player. The official site has Sidekick Rule Draft version from 2018 free for download. Since then, the Sidekick Rule has been added in one of the official 5B Rule expansion series, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Therefore, it is perfectly acceptable to use Sidekicks in the Lost Mine of Fandelver adventure. Prior to knowing the Sidekick system existence, I had started playing the Lost Mine of Fandelver using two level 3 characters to compensate for level 1 party character based on Dungeon Oracle player party number conversion table suggestion. This has started well, but when the third part of the adventure was reached, normally played character should reach to the third to fourth levels. My two characters who started at level 3 were only at level 4. So I'm now playing with two level 4 characters on the missions that are designed to be played by 4 level 4 party. I started to feel a bit unbalanced and this is actual reason why I had decided to give a try on the essential kit. Someday, I plan to go back to the Lost Mine of Fandover using one player character and three sidekicks from the essential kit and see how well it works. I have no doubt it works well, but essential kit's one player character and white sidekick on the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak is still less character control and management than the Lost Mine of Fandelver, which is certainly a huge benefit to soul player beginners. The general consensus across the internet is Lost Mine of Fandelver Adventure is one of the best official campaign. While Dragon of Ice Spire Peak isn't usually listed on top 10 by most of the viewers. Personally, I feel both are equally enjoyable. Dragon of Ice Spire Peak is undoubtedly more of a compiled quest approach than progressive story style in Lost Mine of Fandelver. As far as which adventure is better, I will basically leave that to the other sites for the comparison. Each adventure uses a different type of level up system. Lost Mine of Fandelver uses experience based level up system, while Dragon of Ice Spire Peak uses milestone system. In XP system, each encounter gives a certain amount of experience points. When enough points are accrued, the character levels up. This is how the classic RPG video game level up system works. Milestone system is rather than basing on how much XP one gets, the story progression point determines the timing of level up. XP based level up system requires a player to keep track XP, and depending on which path one take, character's level may be different when reaching to a certain quest. This can make the quest too easy or too hard. Milestone approach can ensure each quest are balanced as designer intended. Milestone system is not necessarily the better system, but easier to keep track as a player and also keep the game balanced. Nonetheless, as a solo player, especially beginner, my recommendation is milestone level up approach. 
It is simpler and keeps game balance under control. In an ideal world, the adventure is written in a choose your own adventure book style format to keep spoiler free. Since official adventures are not written to be played without Dungeon Master, neither has this ideal format. So, the main element aided me here is a digital book format with hyperlinks. Physical book has a potential of unintentional but avoidable spoiler. As I searched for a specific section in a book to jump to, I was afraid that some parts may come into the view by accident. Hyperlink in the digital book minimized this risk. Dragon by Spire Peak comes with free digital version on DD Beyond website. Lost Mine of Vandover does not come with any digital cord. Therefore, if you want to get digital version, you need to buy it separately or just buy digital version instead of physical. As I promised at the beginning, I am coming back to the value comparison. Technically, this is not a benefit specific to solo play, but discount code for DD Beyond Digital Version of Player's Handbook in an Essential Kit makes it really great value for its price. Player's Handbook is over 300 page full version of DD 5e Player Rulebook. Essential Kit comes with 50% discount code for its digital version. This is a really great deal because normally it retails $30 on DD Beyond. Even during the site's best of the year sales during after the Thanksgiving event, they had only given 30% discount. If one has to choose one versus the other, I would go with an essential kit first as a beginner solo player. Although it does not come with pre generated characters, you can download them from official Withers of the Coast website for free. In fact, there are more options to choose from than what's contained in the starter kit. The major element making Essential Kit better for solo player is the sidekick system, and the overall game is designed to be balanced for one player, one dungeon master setup. Thanks for watching.